Lawyers of Reddit, what was your oh crap moment in court? Sat in on a personal injury case where the plaintiff broke their leg in an accident and had a doctor on the stand as an expert. The woman's lawyer begins questioning the doctor about their experience with leg injuries. He was a well-known orthopedic surgeon in the area. She asks if he's ever treated a tibular fracture. The leg bones are tibia and fibula. To which he only answers no then she starts grilling him with questions about the tibula. After about 6-7 questions she asks how did you get a medical license and have been able to practice medicine this long if you've never treated a tibula fracture and begins a small rant about going after his credentials and those that gave it to him. To which he simply responds there is no bone named the tibula. The lawyer became beat red and everyone in the room tried their best to keep from laughing including the judge. Oh god I can feel the second hand embarrassment. I was representing a plaintiff in a hit and run case. Plaintiff is testifying and is, despite me preparing them for several hours the previous day, an absolutely terrible witness for her own case. Like, she couldn't even identify the street she was crossing when she was hit by the car. It was a major highway and we had gone through the sequence of events countless times the day before the hearing. The oh crap moment came during cross examination. Defense counsel pulls out a picture of my client dressed up and ready to hit the club which was posted to Facebook the day after the alleged accident. I, thinking quickly, object because the timestamp refers to when it was posted, not when it was taken. Defense counsel showed the picture to my client and asked her when the picture was taken. Sure enough, they say it was taken the day after the accident when she was supposedly in unbearable pain. Oh, crap. Not your fault. Good thing it happened too. It means justice is served. When I was in college, I was a bailiff. Guys on trial for murder. First witness testified that she saw the defendant shoot the victim. Second witness states the same. Police officer testimony is that he arrived at the scene and defendant was there holding the gun. Coroner testimony is that the first bullet hit the victim in the arm. The second bullet hit the victim in the torso and the third bullet hit the victim in the heart which was the fatal shot. Defendant yells out see that proves that I didn't kill him. I only shot the mother sucker twice. I was a baby lawyer in my first year representing the 19 year old child of some rich people in San Mateo County CA. My client had gone on a bit of a shoplifting spree and we were cleaning all her cases up with a global plea, meaning we handled them all at once. Being new, I filled out the plea form wrong swapping the counts she was charged with for the counts she was pleading to. It's an easy mistake to make. Every court has their own unique form and I was unfamiliar with San Mateos. The judge calls my line, starts reading off the plea form, notices the mistake and then starts screaming at the top of his lungs counsel. What is this? What is this? Is this your first day on the job? This is a court of law and we do not accept mistakes. Fill this plea form out correctly or I will have you taken into custody for contempt. I did not expect a reaction like that. My client, who had clearly just taken a huge bong rip at 8am and who was wearing an all pink velvet tracksuit was looking at me like I was the biggest idiot in the world. I corrected the plea form. The judge made me wait until the very end of the calendar to take my plea. Afterward, he called me up to the bench. In private he told me, sorry to ream you like that. Everyone messes the plea form up so I always pick the youngest lawyer to yell at. The older guys will grumble and complain. But if you notice they all fix their own forms and we didn't have any more problems. Keeps the calendar running smooth. Where did you go to law school after that he invited me into his office for coffee and gave me some really good life work advice. Turns out he likes talking to new lawyers. TL. DR. Judge losses his crap in court over a simple mistake. Turns out it was all a show for the other lawyers and I have one of the worst best court experiences of my early career. I am stupid. I 1000% initially thought baby lawyer meant that you were a lawyer that represented babies. <laughs> represented a woman charged with multiple very serious felonies. She insisted that in the months before the offense, she'd been seriously dating one of the detectives who ultimately wound up investigating and testifying in her case. For a variety of reasons, I trusted this client and believed her, even though the detective never disclosed the relationship in his report. So, during his testimony, I asked Detective Smith, you had a romantic relationship with Maze. Defendant. Correct he goes what? No one is visibly offended. 
The judge I ox at me like I've lost my mind. The commonwealth attorney audibly says what? I'm freaking out because a large part of my cross and argument was focused on the bias formed by the prior relationship. And now I've got nothing and I've lost all credibility. I try again. Detective Smith. Have you had a physical relationship with Mays? Defendant. As the commonwealth rises to object and the judge starts to scold me. The detective goes oh. Yay. We've had fricked. It just wasn't very. Romantic. State is Virginia. The jury acquitted my client of the relatively minor charge that the detective in my story was involved with, but convicted of the other, much more serious charges that detective had nothing to do with. There was a confession and video on the serious charges, so it was kind of a no-brainer. Sorry I'm being kind of intentionally vague. There are no confidentiality concerns, since this all happened in open court, but it's distasteful to give out too much information about a client. The detective was not disqualified, his testimony was not thrown out. Impeachment, no matter how good, doesn't result in you getting to throw out a witness's testimony entirely. By the way, it wasn't really the sex that was the issue, it was that he didn't disclose it to anyone and his repeated insistence under questioning that he didn't disclose it because it was irrelevant. Like Watergate, it's not the crime, it's the cover up that gets you. But I don't get to demand the judge throw out the testimony or that charge just because the cop failed to disclose a prior relationship with the defendant. I just get to point it out, argue it in closing, and then hope the jury also sees the relevance. Who do you mean the freaking? Yes, there was that. UK, bear with me on this one. I was in court listening to the most boring old defense lawyer you've ever seen. He was questioning the arresting officer in the case. It was drugs or something like that. Anyway, he's droning on about every little detail and the magistrate was constantly telling him to hurry along. The arresting officer was getting noticeably annoyed and the room became empty pretty quick. Everyone was very bored and annoyed. He was droning about details that I'm not sure anyone was really listening to or cared about. Anyway, he went over arrest times and the likes with the officer. Time he admitted the suspect and released him. He had bored the officer to the point where he was barely paying attention. So he was admitted in at 21.45 on the night in question? Yes. Comma and release the night after. Yes. Comma and that was what? Just after 10 p.m. Yes. What time after 10? I don't know. Quarter past 10 maybe. So my client was detained for more than 24 hours. Um. Wait. The penny dropped. The officer let his guard down and had revealed he kept the defendant for more than 24 hours, which is the max time for detention in the UK. The defense rested and the magistrate threw the case out immediately. Well played sir. Well played. It wasn't me that was the lawyer. Got called for jury duty. Was at the jury selection phase. And they asked if anyone here thinks they should not. Blah blah. Defendant was in the room. I raised my hand. The defending lawyer looked at me like oh this ought to be good and asked me to explain. I suggested I tell them in private. He insisted I tell the courtroom. I said, okay, I probably shouldn't be on this jury because I was on a previous jury for this man which returned a guilty verdict. Lawyer's face went oh crap. Commotion and await while they looked up records. Yep, verified. Whole jury was now tainted. Everyone goes home and they start over. It sounds like you saved yourself quite a tongue lashing by suggesting that it be in private. I was interning for a judge. We were in the middle of voir dire. For what was frankly not that exciting of a criminal case. Half day trial expected. Not salacious details or violence or anything. 75 potential jurors in the room. And when my judge didn't let a guy out of jury duty because he'd have to pick up his kids that guy proceeded to say in front of everyone that if he was made to show up next week he'd make it the shortest trial ever and find him guilty right out of the gate. My judge was an incredibly even keel guy. Nothing shook him or got to rise out of him. And he was an expert at figuring out what he wanted to say in the most neutral fashion possible before he said it. Conversations with him took forever because there was a pause before every sentence. But then, but then, this guy poisons an entire jury pool of 75 people. We had to individually question each person to see if that little outburst was going to affect their impartiality, etc. 75 in camera interviews later, judge pulls the guy back in in front of everybody and begins to scream at him about disrespecting him, the courts, and every other juror's time. Me, 
the attorneys, and the court reporter go whiteface because we didn't know this was coming. The guy didn't have to sit for jury duty, but I still don't know if he got to pick his kids up, since he spent a couple days in jail for contempt. This is probably why the couple jury selections I've been and they dismissed everyone at the first hint that person seemed like they didn't want to be there. Including the guy who sighed loudly then walked shaking his head to the jury box when his name was called. Judge instantly moved for his dismissal. I was involved in a pretty messy custody case. The other party was a mess and had kept the child from my client for a few weeks. OP was playing lots of stupid games and kept requesting continuances. I requested a drug test, which the judge ordered. However, the OP didn't show up for it. To clarify, he did show up. He just stood in front of the toilet for literally 2 hours and claimed he couldn't pee. I was representing the plaintiff so the burden was on me. I called multiple witnesses that testified to the defendant's drug use. So, opposing counsel decides to call their client for direct examination and asks, you don't use H and crack, right that is, for the non-lawyers. A very stupid question for many reasons. Especially considering his client didn't show up for his drug test. However, I fully expected the defendant to just lie and say he was clean. After the question was asked, there was a really long pause and the defendant said, Yes, I do both of those drugs. My head almost exploded. I didn't ask any questions on cross-examination because I didn't want to muddy the waters. I won, and the child is doing great. I genuinely don't understand how people are this stupid. Not mine but my boss's one. She had to defend a small time delinquent as duty solicitor. Before going to court he asked her what he should do. She explained to him if he was cooperative and truthful his sentence would be milder. After hearing the case the judge asked him if he wanted to add something. He got up and explained to the judge, my counsel told me to be truthful. So I wanted to tell you that I not only did the robbery I'm being heard for but also several others in the region. He continued to admit to several robberies that had been unsolved yet and everyone, even the state attorney were fascipaming. I suspect the truth did not set him free. Mine actually happened while I was sitting in the jury pool during Viadaya. The case was a double homicide, and the jury pool filled the entire courtroom. If you're not familiar with via diary it is when the lawyers ask the potential jurors questions to determine who they want to sit on the jury and who they want to exclude. It is a long and boring process for almost everyone involved, but 9 stroke 10 it's the most important stage in a case. So the lawyers are asking us questions and if that question applied to you, you raised your hand and they handed you a microphone to answer the question. The question asked was do you or anyone you know have prior knowledge of this case? So this older gentleman raised his hand, is handed the mic, and proceeds to say yeah I work at a police station as a janitor, and I heard two detectives talking about him points to defendant and they were saying he was about as guilty as sin. We all kind of stared open mouthed like this guy, and I started chuckling because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Naturally, the defense attorney asked to approach the bench followed quickly the by the state prosecutor. After some quick and energetic whispering, the judge addressed the man. Do you realize what you just did? You potentially poisoned this entire jury pool. I will be calling your boss and you will be hearing about this. You can count on that. You are dismissed sir. But this isn't over. The man was escorted out and then the judge addressed the remaining jury pool which was still in a mostly packed room. Now I want you all to disregard what that man just said. I'm sure if any of you were ever accused of a crime like this you would want a fair trial and not be condemned based on the words of one old man. I have been in court many times since, but never have I seen that level of downright jaw-dropping absurdity again. Literally the first thing I ever did, was just a law student intern. Guy has a legit defense on a drug possession case. Drugs found in a jacket. Guy wasn't wearing jacket. They were going to have a very difficult time proving the jacket belonged to my guy. Had a long meeting with client. Explained everything. Client was excited. Day of the preliminary hearing. Guy shows up and sits down directly in front of the officer who arrested him. While wearing the jacket in question. The exact same jacket we were going to say they couldn't prove belonged to him. Not in court but at a tribunal. And also I was plaintiff. Suing for wrongful termination. My rep. So you terminated him because he was ill. Employer. Yes. Mr. And he was ill because he is disabled. Employer. Yes. 
Mister, so you fired someone for being disabled. Employer, yes. Was in court for a directions hearing. The judge was already in a bad mood and asked why we were here for such a seemingly pointless litigation. Without giving details. He was right. The barrister starts to make our case. And I am taking note about areas we need to further explore when I hear. Excuse Emmy. Why were you so rude to Emmy? The client, who had been told to not come, had come to court that day and was evidently incensed by the judge questioning the merit of their case. They berated the judge for about 3 minutes, with me and my co-counsel first stunned and then trying to shut them up, before he adjourned the hearing. The case did not go very well, to my client's surprise and fury. Big sigh. Ahahahaha. <laughs> Those are always the ones who are totally shocked when it doesn't go their way. Not me but my former law partner. She was in court representing a client. I think in a hearing for a restraining order against her soon to be ex-husband. Our client was telling the judge that when they met to exchange the children for visitation, the ex had kicked her. He immediately angrily shouted she can't prove it, I didn't leave a mark thanks, buddy. There was something like this on Judge Judy when she was asking the plaintiff about items stolen from her bag. The defendant quickly jumped in and said something in particular wasn't in said bag. Busted. Probably the funniest one I ever came across happened to a colleague. We were prosecutors then. 18 year old defendant applying for bail. He needed a residential address and got his dad to show up at court to confirm that the family home was available to him. Defense lawyer gets old dad to confirm that son can stay at family home. Dad says yes. My fellow prosecutor gets up and asks dad. Do you really want him home? Dad goes off the deep end. Jesus. The grief he's brought me and his mother. Out all hours. Taking drugs. Hiding stolen property in the garage. All night parties. I'm on antidepressants and the wife's had a nervous breakdown. Dad goes off on one for five solid minutes. As the defendant gets taken back to the cells, he calls out thanks dad. I owe you one. Two moments in a DUI trial. One, passenger is testifying for driver's sobriety when the do asks her. You keep saying he was sober, but are you even tip certified? A call for bartenders so they can recognize drunk patrons she was. Two, the head of the county's blood lab accidentally admitted he cranked the sensitivity of his machines way up because he was experimenting. On to, thanks, Krieger. Obligatory anal, but in a pre-mediation meeting once for an uninsured motorist claim an insured had alleged that she couldn't walk without the aid of a cane and had a pronounced limp after an accident due to a low back injury and a shooting pain in her right leg. The doctor notes didn't support anything but a subjective injury after a few weeks, but she was still treating two years later and going to new physicians. So, we had her followed covertly to see if she was really using the cane and had a limp, etc. We got footage of her carrying like 4 grocery bags in each arm to her car in a Walmart parking lot, walking perfectly fine. When she got to her car she even opened the trunk of her SUV without putting any bags down and lifted the gate with her knee partway. Her elderly mother was with her using a particularly decorative purple cane with a flower pattern on it. They followed her to a doctor appointment an hour later and she's on video using her mother's cane and walking with a limp that would give Forrest Gump a run for his money. Never did follow up on how that played in the mediation, but I can only imagine it gave some attorney an oh crap moment. My grandfather was a pie. It's amazing how freaking dumb people are when it comes to insurance fraud. Person I was representing was on trial for assault in the third degree and DUI. In my state, A3 means you've assaulted an aid worker or police officer and is a felony. The allegations are that he was very verbally abusive to the officers and, at one point, kicked one in the face. We're sitting at the defendant's table and the officer is testifying about the statements my guy made to him, including some pretty horrific name calling. Out of nowhere, my client screams you're freaking liar frick you, you son of a bee. We lost the trial. Another time, the judge asked a client whether anyone had coerced him into pleading guilty, and he said yeah, my attorney, I about crap my pants, but he laughed and said, I'm joking, number. Not a lawyer, but a defendant. As a teenager, I got busted with a couple of buddies throwing eggs at cars. We were only actually in the courtroom for our sentencing. There was no trial. 
The judge called each of us up individually to ask us if we had anything to say. One of my friends tells the judge that he is a good kid who doesn't normally do things like this. Lie. We used to do it all the time. And that I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I wish there was a video of my other friend and I sitting in the benches watching this happen. We simultaneously dropped our heads into our hands because we couldn't believe that idiot just said that. The judge was not pleased, and she took the opportunity to remind him that going to a store, buying eggs, going to another location across town, and then throwing those eggs at cars was not just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I am sorry your honor. I, uh, I didn't know I couldn't do that. I'm not a lawyer but I was a character witness for my childhood dog in a civil trial between our neighbors and my parents. Opposing counsel was questioning me, I wasn't even out of elementary school at the time, and he asked if our dog was aggressive. She was a rottweiler and very loving and incredibly protective of me and my siblings. His final question to me is one I will never forget. He asked did your father tell you what to say before you came into court today I responded yes. Then he asked what did he tell you to say I said the truth. Now I was too young to remember the courtroom reaction, but according to my father the judge audibly guffawed and the opposing counsel lost all the wind out of his sails. Character witness for my dog has me smiling. They're so loyal to us. We should return the favor. I was at a hearing arguing that my client was wrongfully terminated because the employer failed to abide by the proper procedures. During the hearing a witness for the employer tried to offer documents that were fraudulently altered in order to make it look like the proper procedure was followed. I noticed the alteration. Opposing counsel quickly got that witness out of the room, and after a quick adjournment, my client got a large settlement. As a law student we were allowed to make court appearances under the supervision of an assistant district attorney. I was doing arraignments and my aide said don't talk to the judge unless he asks you a specific question. So the judge and the defense attorney were going back and forth about when the next court date would be. The judge wanted a specific date, let's say 4 stroke 20. The defense attorney was adamant that she couldn't do that date. In my file, I had a calendar with a big X over 4 stroke 20 saying do not schedule. The judge and defense attorney go back and forth for several minutes. The judge wanted 4 stroke 20 and the defense attorney saying no. I was keeping my mouth shut because the judge hadn't asked me directly. Finally, the defense attorney relents and agrees to 4 stroke 20. The judge turns to me and says do the people agree with 4 stroke 20 at which point I say sorry your honor, but we cannot schedule for 4 stroke 20. The judge looked at me for a second and then just ripped into me Mr. Jones 1. You just heard me and the defense go back and forth for several minutes about a date you knew the people couldn't do. Do you like wasting the court's time it went on like that for a few minutes. Him just berating me in front of about 200 people in a court in Brooklyn. Finally after me apologizing profusely and him giving me a withering glare, we moved on and went to the next case. At the next break, the judge said Mr. Jones 1, please approach the bench. I thought I was really in for it then. I walked up beside the bench. The judge came down to talk to me and said with a big smile don't worry about it. I was just giving you a hard time. Welcome to Brooklyn Criminal Court. Opposing counsel was a nightmare, everything late, his work was extremely subpar, and so forth. Accused me of lying multiple times when he had dropped the ball. During another hearing in which he did another dumb move, judge says I'm glad you are the last case on the call, and all of the other attorneys have left the room, so they aren't here to hear me say that you are a terrible attorney. Medical malpractice defense lawyer here representing hospitals doctors. This was not my oh crap moment but plaintiff's oh crap moment. For context, usually at trial, both plaintiff and defendant will have an expert physician testify as to their opinion to whether the doctor hospital performed everything correctly. I thoroughly researched plaintiff's expert, who was an obgin, baby delivery, and found out he had been suspended a number of times for his own botched deliveries and giving incorrect medical testimony to help plaintiff's cases. During the actual day of trial, Turns out he was not licensed to practice medicine independently without supervision from another physician and he was one year into his three year suspension. Plaintiff's lawyers had no idea about their own expert's background and they just sat there with a blank look on their face. Needless to say, during cross-examination, we destroyed his credibility and won at trial. 
you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.